Um, hi, Mayor Mike here. I normally will be sitting here with my colleagues around the table. We're in COVID times and we're having to do a lot of work uh, remotely and so that's why I'm bringing you this segment on behalf of Council through video for our quarterly update. This is my proud pleasure on behalf of Council to tell you what it is that we've been doing for you lately that lines up with a strategic plan that we put together to deliver for the citizens that we serve. Doing business in the city over the last several months uh, through COVID times has been extremely challenging on my colleagues on council as well as for our city staff and all of our frontline services that we have around us. We're continuing to do what we need to do to ensure our core services run and that COVID has had some tremendous impacts on, on how we do and deliver our business. So uh, you're used to seeing these slides. These are uh, our five core priorities in our strategic plan. And as we're evolving our way to present these things, uh, you'll, you'll have seen now much more robust reporting from our finance, police, fire, as well as from our administration that uh, delivered a significant report uh, just two weeks ago. And so now it's my pleasure to just uh, give a top overview on some of the key items that uh, we're working on here in Council in alignment with these five strategic priorities. Uh, one of Council's uh, five strategic priorities was working together with uh, senior government, government advocacy work. It's what we do when we get together, when we need things for our community and the results that we can get when we work together as a team and work together on a much larger picture, just like we did through COVID and through a significant healthcare pandemic, as we continue to work through that, it's by dropping the politics and working together because it's a healthcare matter. So as, as all of that has rolled out right in front of us, uh, right behind me here is home of the, uh, our, our bus depot where the R3 bus, we cut the ribbon to that at the beginning of the year in January. And then COVID hit and significant drop in uh, public transit service, one where still, even at the height of of this pandemic, 100,000 people a day were riding the Metro Vancouver transit system. Our council, all councils in the Lower Mainland Metro Vancouver region, all lobbied and in conjunction with the province, we fought to keep our transit system running. And it's really important for the growth of the Lower Mainland where we're talking about an ad additional million people. And part of the product of this success was significant parking problem in our downtown core. So I'm standing on top of 128 new lots that we've had to facilitate to provide space for parking in our downtown core. It's part of the uh, initiatives that our council is doing to support growth in our community. One of council's key strate uh, strategic initiatives uh, is community safety. It's probably the central cornerstone of all of council's work is to ensure that we have a safe community and people can get the help that they need. Right behind me here, you'll see uh, activation in the downtown core. These are initiatives we run throughout the week and on weekends throughout the summer to try and keep our downtown core busy, active with positive engagement. Uh, staff are over there right now and you can see social distancing in effect and they've really got this all sorted out. So this is just about positive engagement. We've also got some other types of engagement that we've got to deal with in the downtown core that aren't so positive. And we've hired uh, specially trained community safety officers as part of our plan uh, who can intervene because they're specialists at intervention because they have knowledge and skills basically completely suited to be able to provide options for people that are having significant challenges on our streets to be able to uh, make different choices, make different decisions. But we're also there to ensure that we intervene so that people can be safe and can feel safe while they carry out their work. Also right behind me here on the downtown 224th Street, we're seeing uh, new patios being assembled right now. It was a great initiative by Council to really facilitate uh, uh, a bit of an upstart lift to uh, business that are having to work with social distancing. So we're doing everything we possibly can to ensure we've got a full and complete safe community and the people get the help that they need. And that goes from a whole complete wide social safety net, but also that we've got a full public safety model that complements it. So let me take you to our community pride and spirit pillar of our, our council strategic plan. So first we had our, uh, we've had to do so many things differently. Uh, our virtual Canada Day celebrations. Uh, Park Ambassador Program was an, another significant piece that we did, which was to uh, mobilize staff that uh, 
would normally been working in our rec center, but we had to close down our pool. And uh, these individuals stepped up and were asked to go out into the community and uh, ensure that our park space, our outdoor space, uh, playground equipment was all secured and ensure that it's a healthy and safe environment and, and also to ensure that uh, a significant amount of park usage um, the litter was cleaned up and uh, we, we, we uh, take pride in, in what our parks look like so they're there for everyone to enjoy because that's part of what's keeping us healthy as we go through this. Um, we also launched um, a um, acknowledgement to the graduates this year that uh, uh, didn't, didn't get to have a, a formal graduation ceremony and we wanted to do our part so we got together with School District 42 and uh, uh, Chair Carreras and myself and our both our communications teams came up with a with a, a glow celebration at uh, Memorial Peace Park, which was uh, really well received. Where people could come and uh, uh, take uh, selfie pictures and just be able to have something there to to have a memento for what was a significant milestone in uh, many many young people's lives. Uh, we also opened uh, many many sports fields back up, uh, spray parks. Uh, really pleased that the Hammond Outdoor Pool is back open. Unfortunately, uh, our, our rec center, that's, go that's gonna be a, another step. It's, uh, it, it's not easy to open up a pool. And um, you know, on the good news is we, unfortunately we had to cancel the uh, BC Summer Games because of COVID, but uh, really pleased that we were able to secure uh, the games back here in Ridge for 2024. Uh, the minister really stepped up actually and got us uh, the first right of refusal on that. And, like our community always does, 3,500 volunteers will come out and get together and do what we got to do for 2024. One of Council's key commitments in our strategic plan is to our environment. I'm here in, in Albion Park, one of our many, many neighbourhood parks. One of the reasons that Maple Ridge uh, is home to many people is because they came here and they fell in love with our beautiful natural environment. And that's uh, one of Council's key commitments is to ensure we do our part to look after our natural place. Uh, one of the first things that we've, we've tackled in the last uh, two quarters is to look after our four-footed furry friends in the bear population. Uh, we've increased our, our enforcement levels, but we've also really stepped up on education and we work together with a, a group, the community group called the uh, Maple Ridge Bears, and really pleased to see that uh, we've really um, mobilized a lot of a lot of, um, I guess it's about respectful engagement with our bear population. There's a lot of learnings, a lot of best practices coming out of this and I'm really pleased with the results. Second piece that we're doing here is uh, essentially it's renewing our commitments towards GHG uh, reduction, doing the right things uh, in our natural environment, but within the municipal laneway. There's, everybody has personal responsibility, we have municipal responsibility and others have their responsibilities. At Metro Vancouver, this is a serious initiative at their level. So we're gonna do our part. Uh, we've been doing our part in Maple Ridge for many years, from electrification of our, uh, our vehicle fleets to uh, solar initiatives to heat our pool. Uh, the list is significant. And we're now, uh, we have uh, asked uh, for staff to bring us back an action plan report on what the next steps look like. And we're really pleased to support that work. Uh, one of Council's five strategic priorities is growth. And one part of that growth is, of course, providing housing for people. There are many, many other aspects to it too. Right behind me here is the new community services building. It's part of what's gonna provide us in Maple Ridge with a full continuum of housing. Everything from single family all the way to multifamily, all the way to uh, housing for, uh, to meet the needs of those that can't necessarily afford the same as you know, their neighbor. So this is a part of building complete communities, housing, uh, jobs. Speaking of jobs, 13% in our community right now and British Columbia are unemployed. So really pleased that this particular sector has been able to continue on and really appreciate the work in the uh, planning and development and building departments to keep this uh, area going through this COVID times. Uh, one of council's other initiatives is to ensure that we're really facilitating excellence in uh, our permitting and our development process. Uh, we can always do better and we're committed to looking at all of that and becoming much more transparent in what it is that uh, we're managing, even though that uh, things like the new step code and the building practices and policies, uh, these create a lot of regulatory barriers and we wanna make sure that we've got uh, as best as possible mechanisms in place to help people through the process.
So uh, this is uh, one of my first stops on a tour and we'll continue on. Uh, right behind me here is Firefighters Park. It is co-located next door to the new Fire Hall 4. Uh, these are, this is uh, part of Council's commitment. Uh, when we have significant growth, uh, as we're experiencing as a city, we want to make sure that uh, we have all the infrastructure that we need uh, to keep people safe through the Fire Hall, but also neighborhood parks where people can recreate. We really appreciate the value of these and what they provide to uh, families to be able to get out and enjoy our outdoor space. Um, this is our final stop on one of Council's strategic priorities in, in managing growth in our city. And right behind me here is the uh, new Albion Community Center. Uh, all the foundations are in. The next stage now, fully authorized and will be built, is the uh, final construction of the building. Uh, this is part of a complex right next door to the Sesquinella School in partnership with the school district. It's going to be a social hub and a gathering place operates from dawn till dusk. It's just going to be an amazing uh, way to complete the Albion neighborhood. This started at, uh, it had its former roots down by Bruce's Market, a very small community gathering place that eventually met end of life. And it was our commitment to the Albion community to deliver what will become a, a pretty amazing community center. So um, thank you for, um, for your attention in uh, listening to some of these uh, top level comments here on behalf of council. Um, seeing the administration's report such as this, which uh, you'll find details on our website, click the link below. Um, we're now producing you metrics. It's, it's all about when you run into citizens on the street and they say to you, uh, well, council, what, did, what have you done for us lately? Well, we're now delivering on our commitments to tell you what it is we're doing frequently and often. Every quarter we committed to do that from police, fire, Uh, our administration and so now I have the actual pleasure of not trying to deliver that all to you in five minutes but just to give you some top few comments on what was really really significantly important because uh, council is who sets the plan but it's our staff that go ahead and deliver the work and so now it is that we're accounting to you what it is that we're doing uh, with the direction that you gave us because frankly it's all about doing what matters to you.